Hey guys, Chris, Midwest Bass Hunter. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that for a long time was kind of a mystery to me. Putting line on a spinning reel. All right, bass hunters, this is my new reel, my new spinning reel that I got. Uh, I'm actually going to use this for trout fishing, not bass fishing, although I may use it for bass fishing in the future. Uh, but I specifically bought it for a trout fishing trip that I'm going on. Um, so I need to put some line on it. So I got some of this Stren 6-pound clear blue. So we're going to show you how to put this on a spinning reel. Now, putting line on a bait casting reel, super simple. Putting line on a spinning reel a little bit more complicated. For years, uh, I struggled to do this. In fact, usually I just paid uh, the bait shop to do it. But I've had them screw it up as well. So if you put the line on this reel incorrectly, you will have nothing but trouble. You'll have all kinds of twisted line, tangled line, and um, just a bunch of problems. So I'm going to show you a way that I learned uh, from a buddy of mine a few years back. Um, and since I've learned how to do this, it's been super easy to put a uh, line on my spinning reel and I haven't paid anyone to do it like I used to and it, it's worked great. So here's how you do it. So to tie this line to my spool, I'm going to use what's called an arbor knot. Arbor knot is like one of the simplest knots that you can use to tie a line to a reel. If you can't see this very well from my video... Just search it up on YouTube. You'll find a bunch of videos on it, I'm sure. So basically, you're going to tie an overhand knot. Just pull it tight. Just like that. And there you have a little knot. Then we're going to cut the tag end off of there. Just be careful you don't, like, cut the knot. So I've cut the tag end, and I have a little knot there. I'm going to take and run it around the spool. Make sure you have your bail open. You got to have your bail open. If you don't, you can always take the spool off and put it back on. So to tie this, then I'm going to just tie another overhand knot, basically a square knot. I'm just going to pull that tight. Now, that little knot on my tag end is going to cinch down into this knot. It will tighten right up on there. So you can see it right there. It's tight. Okay, now a couple things here. With this reel, I have this little rubber strip right here. This little rubber strip. And that keeps the line from spinning on the reel. So I don't need to do anything different. On, if you don't have that, you can take a little piece of scotch tape and just put it on top of that, right on top of your knot. And you don't want a big piece, just a little piece, and that'll keep the line from spinning. And also kind of grip it when you initially start to reel it on. Now, before you reel on the line, you got to make sure that it's coming off the spool in the right way. So when, I use a, when I'm spooling a bait caster, I'll just stick a pencil through this and have my wife or one of my kids hold on to the spool and I just reel it on. And it just goes on no problem. But you cannot do that with a spinning reel because you will cause the line to twist because you're going to take it and you're going to turn it 90, de or 90 degrees from the way it's coming off the spool onto here. So you cannot do that. You just got to let the spool sit down and reel it off the spool. In order to get the line to go on the spool, the onto the reel the same way that it's coming off the spool, you want to have the label up. So no matter what brand of line it is, as long as you have the label pointing toward the sky, it will come off of there the proper way. So you just set that down, 
close your bail, and then you can start reeling it on. Now what I like to do is to run the line through a towel, and that way I can hold it tightly. Um, if I just do it with my fingers, it's gonna burn my fingers. So I use a towel to hold the line. Now I'm gonna put quite a bit of tension on this because I want it to go on the reel nice and, you know, I want it really on the reel, snug down. And just fill her up. As you can see, I just have a towel. This is like a dish towel. I'm just holding the line up here, holding it tight and running it through that towel. All right, now that I've got it spooled on there, I don't want to fill it all the way. As you can see, I've got a little bit of space left on there. I don't want to leave that. I've seen some guys fill it all the way, basically to the max capacity of the spool. I don't do that. I just leave a little bit there. That little lip there, see? So I'm going to cut the line. And I'm ready to go. But I have one last little trick here. So take that line. Wrap it around this little line keeper right here. Every spinning reel that I remember that I've seen has one of these on it. Put it under there, then let's take this spool off. If you just loosen this up, you can take the spool all the way off. Now, there's some stuff on here. This is part of the drag system. And you see there's a bearing and a gear. Make sure you don't lose any of those pieces. Now you just have your spool full line. So the last thing you can do, and this really helps with line memory. So here I have a glass of warm water. It's not hot water, but it's warm. I'm gonna take this spool and just put it in there. There's nothing on that spool that can't get wet. We'll just leave it in there for a little while. Just like uh, three, four minutes. What that will do is reshape that line so that it's the memory of that line is to that spool diameter. The spool diameter of this is a lot bigger than the spool diameter on that on that fishing reel. So this kind of resets that memory. This is probably one of the best things that you can do to keep your fishing line from being getting tangled up or whatever or causing you problems when you're casting. All right, now that I got it out of the water, put my spool back on my reel. Now I'm ready to go fishing. There's one last thing you can do to help with line memory, and that is to stretch your line. So on monofilament or fluorocarbon line, um, you can actually just stretch it just a little bit and that will decrease the memory that the line has. I have a video on how to do that and I will leave a link right up here so that you can check that out if you'd like. Thanks for watching today. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.